Hello friends. Today we're going to look at some comments on the comments that people have been leaving on our YouTube channel. Hello friends of Following Padre Pio. My name is Edward Durbin presenting our channel in which we investigate the absolutely incredible life of Padre Pio, the Capuchin, Capuchin monk, mystic and miracle worker whose intercession is still so powerful today. So if you or a friend or a loved one is in need of Padre Pio's help or intercession, then do stay tuned to this channel to find out what Padre Pio can do for you. Now, our first comment is by Gary Suarez and he says, it is a joy to review the life of saints. And of course, Gary, I couldn't agree with you more. There's something absolutely fantastic about the life of a saint that gives one a certain joy and a happiness. And perhaps it is just knowing that Christ has not abandoned us. He's come back to us in a sense through his saints, still demonstrator, demonstrating his favor to us. So please keep us in your prayers, Gary. And here's another comment from Kenneth Lobo. And he says, Saint Padre Pio never ceases to amaze me. Um, truly God's spirit is in him. Yes, certainly, Kenneth. Um, the, the more stories one hears about Padre Pio, even if one or two might be a little exaggerated here or there, altogether it becomes more and more compelling evidence that he was an incredible saint, a holy man of the Catholic Church. Thank you for your support, Kenneth. Someone called Maritha writes, Please, St. Padre Pio, intercede for, and then gives a number of, of um, local things, and also for the persecuted Christians in Nigeria and all over the world. So certainly, although we don't hear much in the mainstream media about persecutions of Christians, um, it's certainly not gone out of fashion in our very secularized world. We see martyrs and churches defaced and, and blasphemies of all sorts in sacred spaces, altars, shrines, etc. And hear very little for prayers and assistance to prevent all of this happening. So perhaps, and this is my question, and you can leave your answer in the comments below, um, do you not think that this is going to be a great disappointment to God that so few prayers are, are offered? This indifference, we may say. Do you think it would offend God? So let us remember to always keep our persecuted brothers and sisters, brethren in our hearts and prayer. Because who knows, it might be our turn next to be persecuted. And here's another comment left by Patrick Dum, and he says, Thank you, dear Holy Saint Pio, for your interventions for the faithful throughout the world. We need you to continue to intervene for humanity and the clergy. Amen. And also, dear God, thanks for sending Saint Pio to us. May he continue to save souls and work miracles in your name. Ave Maria, protect the faithful. Amen. Many thanks to you, Patrick. There is really something about your prayer that is quite touching. It shows an appreciation for what God has done for us. And surely that's, that sort of prayer has got to bring down blessings upon us all. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. And our next comment comes from someone who signed in as Ayn71 and saying the following. I ask for prayers and St. Pio's intercession and also Father Casey's two weeks ago on this channel and for my, brothers who, for my brother who was in intensive care in hospital. Doctors gave him very little chance. Thank God and St. Pio, he's well on the road to recovery now and truly a miracle and he came around on Easter Sunday. Thanks everyone for your prayer. True, truly miracles can happen through prayer. And thank you to our writer for sharing this with us, these encouraging words. Certainly we believe that our God is still the God of miracles. And Padre Pio, pray for us. And here's another comment from someone, Pari Mala, writing in, in a state of distress, says the following, Please, Padre Pio, pray for me. I'm having symptoms of corona. Please pray for me. And then um, so someone responds to that, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. So thank you both. And let us keep each other in our prayers. Um, because one day, of course, life can be easy and the next day something hits us out of the blue and then we have to rely on other people's prayers and God's goodwill to us. So please do remember to pray for each other. Thank you for the, the, both of these comments. And here is one by Kai Jacinto. 
and Kai says the following. Hello, I'm wondering if you have a video or some sort of introduction about yourself. I love your content, love your videos, love, love the videos you've made. You seem genuine and authentic. Thank you very much. I just find myself wondering who is he? Why is he so dedicated to Padre Pio? How did this whole order for Padre Pio begin, etc. It would be cool to understand where you're all coming from and why you do what you do. So just to just to attempt a little bit of an answer, it's quite a difficult question actually to answer, to give a proper overview of this. Um, a little bit about me, my history. Uh, I think that saints have always had a tremendous and fascinating interest for me because there's something about their story that can just go beyond, you know, the no ordinary mundane life. It's so, so different in our world today of pure pragmatism, materialistic, instant, everything instant, binary. And yet we see God often sends one of the saints a calling and then a contradiction and follows immediately after. And the saint has to somehow work their way out of that and still reach their destination. And they do so with the help of God, with miracles and all sorts of things. So it's, it's fascinating to read stories like this. And so many years ago, I, I had the good fortune to visit Brazil. And of course, it went to the Shrine of Aparecida. It's a national shrine in, in Brazil. There, there's a beautiful statue. But in fact, in the old church, I'd say I'd received a tremendous grace at the time that perhaps that's what set me on my course. And of course, thereafter, I met the, the founder of our organization, Professor Plinio who's reputed to have an incredible discernment of spirits, of individuals, of the spirits of, of the spirit of a nation, where the nation's going, all sorts of things like that. So he reads people like a book. People go to him and he would tell them more about themselves than they knew about themselves. And they would discover he was correct afterwards. He had this incredible gift of discernment. So that was an important point, meeting Professor Plinio. It certainly encouraged me in this direction. And, and then many years later, I made a, a pilgrimage through Europe with um, another fellow. And we went, of course, to Rome and all sorts of saints and beautiful churches and things. But what really touched me was a visit, visit to a different town, Genizano. And there, there's an image of a lady of Genizano, a fascinating story that you can read about um, very briefly the history as it's recorded and up to you whether you want to believe this or not um, way back in 1476 albania so that's a country across the adriatic sea from italy they were being invaded by muslim armies and um, they fought valiantly absolutely valiantly under an incredible fighter called Skanderberg. But finally, the country fell. So our Lord, Our Lady had the choice. Do they leave the shrines there? What do they do? And there was this one particular shrine, Our Lady of Good Services in Albania, where a miracle seems to have taken place. And this picture, this particular picture at Genizano was in Albania. It was painted on the plaster of the wall. And two people were praying in front of the picture, uh, Giorgio and uh, Desclavis, and praying for Albania and, of course, for the shrine. And it seems that the shrine somehow, according to the story, detached from the wall. And then they followed this picture over the Adriatic Sea towards Italy. Can you believe that? And, he, and further to that, sometime previously, there was a lady, Petrusia. She was a wealthy widow in the town of Genizano, and she had received this vision that she must restore the local church in Genizano. She spent all of her money trying to restore this church. Every cent she had, she ran out. It wasn't complete. And she went to the townspeople asking them, please help me restore the church. Of course, they thought she was mad and a fool and they wouldn't help her at all. And then one day what happened is a cloud, they say, of striking beauty drifted down upon the village. Very strange, but they said emanating from the cloud was the sound of equally striking, beautiful music. And the fresco of Our Lady, that is from, um, from Albania, separated out from the cloud and positioned itself um, on the altar that Petrusia had ordered in anticipation of the church's, church's restoration. And it just kind of hung there in front of the wall. It was not... Um, attached by a nail or anything, just suspended, they say, about an inch from the wall. And perhaps the, the, the miracle is the, the, those town people who were very tight with their money, suddenly the money rolled in and their church was soon completed. Well, that's the story. And for 500 years, that particular image has been there in that Augustinian church. 
So it was very interesting for me to, to be able to visit and to listen to the story and the whole thing. Now, whatever you may make of that story of the, the image coming across the sea, that's up to you. Um, one can research it and, and go into, the, into depth on all of that sort of thing. But if I may read this, which is maybe similar to my own, you can take this as my answer. Canon Andrea Bassi was a famous shrine historian known for his zeal in propagating devotion to our mother of good counsel. And he addressed a letter to Friar Angelo Mario de Origo, in which he relates the observations he made when visiting Gen Genizano to venerate the, Im the blessed image in 1734. Please note, venerate, not worship. And with, with all of my heart, he says, and with an extraordinary intended in interior tenderness, I asked the most clement mother of good counsel for the great grace I desired, and that meant so much to me. And halfway through the litany, I saw clearly that the image had become radiant and ruddy like a crimson rose. I was convinced I had not been mistaken when, as I was leaving, one of the religious present told me that Mary Most Holy had undoubtedly granted me the grace I had interiorly requested because the holy image looked joyful and the colors had intensified. In Indeed, upon my return to Rome, filled with a lively confidence of having been heard, I suddenly received the longed-for grace. It came in such a fullness that all at once the difficult vexations that had been troubling me cleared up. And a, and a great peace and serenity of soul came over me. I considered myself the happiest and most blessed man on earth. And with that, we finish the comments. Please.